<laughs> what what is, is going on YouTube? Thank you, Women Carry Knives. How's everybody doing today? I am doing videos. I guess I'm doing okay. I'm having a bit of a struggle here. Sometimes it's like that when you're trying to make videos. Uh, I was trying to make a video for this. This is the Sniper Blade Works DMF, and there is a video for this coming, but right now we're going to do something else. We're going to look at another Terrain 365 knife. This is the Terrain 365 STSAT. The STS stands for C2 Summit. They're very proud of that. I think it's very cool. Uh, recently, I reviewed the uh, Invictus, also by Terrain 365, and as you can see, these knives are very, very similar, but different in some interesting ways. Um, <clears throat> I've had this one now for a little while. I got this one because I got this marvelous gift from Women Carry Knives, and I fell in love with this blade shape and design. So at Blade West, I picked up the Terrain 365 Invictus. While I was at the table, I noticed that they had other styles in the same all-titanium ceramic bearings and their fantastic Teravantium, which is dendritic cobalt completely rust-free. Holds an edge very well, too, and I'll tell you how I know about that in a minute. Um, I really did love this blade shape and the slight variation in the handle shape that's going on, but this is what I came for, so this is what I got. Now, come forward a couple of weeks, and a buddy of mine had this knife up for trade. So here it is, and I'm very, very happy. Now, I love this clip point it is absolutely beautiful. Uh, the edge that came on this knife was a catastrophe. I don't know who owned this before my buddy, but it looked for all the world like they had sharpened it with a Dremel. Uh, somebody's asked me about the, uh, the Teravantium and how it sharpens and how it feels. My buddy has got a full sharpening rig. He sharpens. I don't. Um, and his experience while sharpening this was that it was very hard and that it took a very, very nice edge. And it this he made this thing just razor sharp. It is an absolute joy. Put a little bit of a polish on it. So how, what, how good's the steel? I don't know. But from his sharpening experience, it's pretty good. So we're going to take that and go on with it, right? Makes sense? The knife itself is much like its cousin, the, uh, the Invictus. As I said, it's all titanium. It is running on, on ceramic bearings. The Teravantium steel is designed for all purpose and all weather. You cannot make this stuff rust, which is very, very cool. The thumb studs are inlaid, inset with glow, little glow dots, which I have a flashlight. Check this out. They glow really well. <laughs> it's very cool. The handle is a little thinner. It is, doesn't look it, but it is just a little bit thinner than the handle on the Invictus. So you get a slightly different feel in hand. It's a little more squared off. Chasing knives is a funny business. You know, I knew when I saw this on the table at the show that I would probably want one. On the other hand, these things are $395 new, which is a significant amount of money. And this particular style is completely sold out on the website. So the odds of running into one not two weeks after Blade West and an opportunity to get one was so odd that I just had to jump on it. So I handed the guy a bunch of knives in trade and he handed this to me and I took it to my buddy and we cleaned up the edge and now I am very, very happy. They make a great knife at uh, <clears throat> Terrain 365. I have heard some complaints. Terrain 365 is sort of cagey about where they have their stuff made. And in this day and age of internet knowledge and everybody knows everything about everything all the time, that causes some people some anxiety, some stress. Uh, probably because it says Teravantium USA on it. And there's no guarantee that this knife is made in the U.S. I get that. And I um, don't care particularly. Hang on just a second. And we're back. Um, it's just made well. And in the end, that's what I care about. Whether it's made uh, by Kaiser or QSP or We or Riot or in the States Millet, I have no idea and I don't, I don't care. Uh, their caginess makes it a little strange. I get that, but I'm not going to worry about it. 
I do know that the materials are excellent. Fit and finish is fantastic. It is a great user. The fact that somebody actually used this enough to actually to want to sharpen it and did such a bad job tells you that it got a lot of carry time. So what do you get? Well, it is a frame lock, right? There is no steel lock bar insert, which means it is titanium on teravantium. Now, how long that's going to last, I don't know, but we're locked up at about 45%. So I've got a bunch of life left in this. There is a ceramic ball pressed into the end here as the detent and the action on this thing is very good. I really, really like it. It's much like the Invictus. They both just pop open. Uh, they're both very comfortable to carry. They both have a slight variation on the same really nice deep carry clip, as you can see. Uh, this one has got a half length backspacer with a spot for a lanyard right here if you're interested in that sort of thing. It's got a little jimping across the tail, across the, the uh, backspacer here and right up here on the blade. However, because of the way this handle is designed, which is flared at either end, gives a little more, I guess I'm going to say tactical appearance. Um, you don't really get into this jimping that easily. In fact, my thumb sort of overshoots it, but it's cool that it's there and I like it. I mentioned the thumb studs, which are pyramid shaped, and they do have the inserts, which are which glow, which is cool. Um, they're shaped really well. Uh, your thumb doesn't dig in; it's not painful, but at the same time, you don't miss either, and that's a really nice touch. As I said, this is a little more squared off, a little less rounded than the Invictus, so it's a much different feel in hand, yet equally comfortable. I didn't mean to start collecting Terrain 365 knives, um, yet here we are. <laughs> and I'm very happy about it. So let's look at the specs, just because some people like that, and then we'll do some size comparisons beyond its cousin. You get a little over three and a quarter of cutting on just at three and a half inches of that teravantium steel. The grip area, um, when I hold it, I come all the way up to here, so that's where we're going to measure it from is four inches and to the tail end of the knife is four and a quarter, but you get plenty of knife. As you can see, I've got some sticking out the end, which is a really nice touch. Both of these are a little handle heavy. Um, the blades, you know, blade length is shorter than the handle. Some people like a really balanced knife, you know, the uh, bug out, which we'll do, do a size comparison is a good example of that, you know, but I like this shape and I like a little extra handle. Uh, the knife itself comes in at just eight inches, like just almost dead on eight inches, which is really nice. And the closed length one, two, three, four and a half in the closed length. So, what do I mean when I like a knife that's a little bit handle heavy? Well, I like stuff like the Strider. We're going to see this again when I talk about the DMF. A lot of handle. Blades compromised a little bit in that, but mostly it's just all about the ability to grip this knife in a bunch of ways. This knife, the STS-AT, is not as pronounced as the Strider, but it's a similar idea. You know, I've got big hands, there's lots of room, and yet there's plenty of blade to do the cutting that I need to do. One of the things I like about this, I don't like it more than the uh, Invictus I love this knife a ton, but I do like how pokey the blade on this one is. Because of that clip point blade and the nice swedge here at the top, it is very pokey and if you needed to give somebody a little nudge, this knife would do a fabulous job at that. I love the plain silver pivot on this side with just the T8 on that side. Um, the screws are nicely inset. This is, by any measure, a great knife. Now, again, I can hear you out there saying, but they're so expensive and, and they're weird about it. I get it. But as a collector and somebody who has had hundreds of pocket knives cross my table and, and worked their way through my collection at this point, I think between women carry knives and I, we have about 300 pocket knives. And we've had more than that because they come and they go. They come in, we have them for a while, we sell them, we trade them. You get to a place where you just recognize good stuff. And this... This is just good stuff. 
Price makes it not for everybody, but I gotta tell you, if you are a fisherman or an outdoorsman, if you are looking for a knife that'll carry you well through all of your travels, your travails, your ups and downs, wet weather, bad weather, snow, salt water, this is not a bad direction to go. And it looks cool, which helps. I think it's very nice. It's nice and thin through the handle too. Uh, we are at just under half an inch. We'll measure that out in a minute. So let's do some specs. Well, let's do some other size comparisons. What sounds fun? What should I compare it to, dear? The Bay over there? I have the Delica. That would be the one. Here it is against the Delica. As you can see, it is considerably larger than the Delica. And here it is against the full-size Presidio 2 in their CF Elite scales. And as you can see, it's smaller than that. It is kind of a great mid-range size knife if it's you've got medium. big... Well, I think for you, this is a large knife. You want to come over and take a look? No? Okay. Uh, just because I know that for me, it's a medium-sized knife. Oh, okay. Right? The Delica is small, small for me. This is a nice medium-sized knife. <laughs> Here it is against a little Tucson flashlight, because why not? And finally, here it is against a full-size Bastion pen. And I've noticed that people, you know, I mean, it's generally just pen size, so that helps you understand its overall size in the pocket. And if you were carrying all of these, which, by the way, this is a fantastic EDC setup, that would be your gear, right? Not too big, not too small. Just interesting and well-made. Just right, as Women Carry Knives said over there. I really like these. <laughs> uh, do, am I going to chase more of them? Yeah, probably. If I can find other designs that they've made, older stuff. Uh, I know they have an auto that they made for a while uh, that's out there right now. Uh, it's called the P38, and I would love to get my hands on one of those. I know a friend of mine who has one right now, and anything's possible. He seems to think he's going to keep that one, but uh, we'll see. So, how much terabantium or dendritic cobalt do you get? Back here at the thickest point, you get just about four millimeters of blade stock, which isn't too bad. The handle at its thickest point is 12.8 millimeters, which is just a hair over a half inch. The handle, it, how, its tallness, I don't know how to say that, but it is just at an inch, which means it fills the hand really nicely. As I said, these are really a comfortable carry and a comfortable use. It's a very neutral shaped handle, right? Much like the uh, Invictus. It's got some really nice milling on it to give it just a little bit of grip down here where your fingers live. This one has this beautiful swell up here at the top, just to where the blade takes off, keep you from moving forward if you were to stab into something, right? There's something to hang on to, which is nice. And it's a thumb ramp as well, which is very cool. In short, or long at this point, the Terrain 365 STS AT is a fantastic pocket knife. And if you happen to come across one and you're looking for a great knife, don't hesitate. On a final note, for those of you that are still here, we're going to go ahead and measure it out. Excuse me, weigh it out. God, I know how to talk. Watch me go. Just to see where it comes in. Because while there is milling on the inside of the titanium scales, and it doesn't feel that heavy, we're going to see where that actually lands. All right. 4.3 ounces for an 8-inch knife with a 3.5-inch blade. Not bad. Not ultralight but not bad just the same. And that is where we're going to end it. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this look at the uh, Terrain 365 STSAT. I know that I enjoy owning it. And I hope that if you're trying to make a decision on a knife like this, this little look at it has helped. Once again, guys, thanks again for watching. We'll see you next time.